Hello, and welcome to the Bankers Tech Talk video series, tracking the movements of fintechs across five years now. You can watch all previous episodes on thebanker.com slash tech talks. I'm Joy McInwright, Managing Editor of The Banker, and I'm joined by Uma Raja, who's co-founder and CEO of Capital Rise, which is a London-based prime real estate property platform. Uma, thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Joy. So can you t explain uh, why, uh, you know, real estate specifically is really lends itself to peer-to-peer uh, -peer platforms? So probably worth me just telling you a bit of background to how we're structured and kind of leading into that. So as a platform, we are a prime property lender. So we lend money to property developers that are focusing on real estate projects in prime locations in the southeast of England. That's Prime Central London, Prime Outer London and the Prime Home Counties. A lot of my book is in areas like Kensington, Belgravia, Mayfair, um, in home counties, locations such as Wentworth, Windsor and Ascot. We offer a range of different types of loans to our uh, borrowers. And in turn, we fund those using a variety of different sources of capital. So we have um, institutional funding lines coming from other financial institutions, such as banks and family offices. And we also have an online digital platform where individual and corporate investors can also invest in our loans. Now, the type of real estate we focus on has historically been totally inaccessible to everyone other than high net worths, our ultra high net worths and institutions with millions to invest. So by developing a technology based platform, we've been able to open up this asset class to a much broader range of investors. And that's why I think it really is very well suited um, to the type of real estate lending that we do which essentially involves you know, multi-million pound loans um, because of the nature and the scale of the projects and the types of asset we're lending to. Um, and it's incredibly popular with our investor base. But what is your business model? And then also, how do you differentiate yourself from competitors? So in terms of the lending that we do, we generate all of our revenue from borrowers who we charge fees for um, sourcing the finance from us. Um, for investors, there are no fees charged um, to invest in our loans. In terms of the unique aspects of our product, uh, very specifically, the quality of real estate we lend to is one of the things that makes us very unique. In property, the old uh, adage goes, location, 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 it's the most important thing. And we focus only on the best locations and the highest caliber of real estate um, is what we, what we lend to and very well-established property developers that are doing those projects. Impressively, you also haven't uh, clocked any uh, defaults um, since you launched in 2016. What has been your secret to your success, uh, but also sort of how are you protecting your business um, during the COVID-19 pandemic? So um, we've been going, as you say, for several years now. We've now returned over 28 million back to our investors in interest and capital with an average return of 9.5% per annum, with, as you say, no investment losses or investment defaults. There are three main reasons behind that. Number one is we are incredibly selective in terms of the opportunities that we source. Um, we screened over £3.4 billion worth of applications last year, and across that we lent around probably 1% to 2% we actually kind of uh, we lent against. So we're incredibly selective and only pick the very best opportunities for our investors. Uh, the second is our the thoroughness of our due diligence process and the team that is doing that due diligence, because they're very, I guess, a unique bunch of people that have very deep expertise in this niche that we focus in on. And I think that gives us a, a real advantage. And the third, which comes on to uh, the impact of COVID-19, is the way in which we structure our investments. So they're always structured to withstand significant amounts of stress. So as an example, and this is not just now, this has always been the case, we always factor in at least the, the ability to accommodate at least um, a year's worth of delay in the project, because as you know, every building project has was going to suffer some delays usually. Uh, and we also lend it very prudently. So our average loan to value ratio across the book is 63%. That means there's a 37% headroom there. That's a massive buffer to absorb potential delays and cost increases to absorb potential reduced um, valuations that the properties might sell at the end. Um, and so because we allow such huge amounts of tolerances, that has enabled us to keep our track record where it is, but also puts us in very good state in terms of the current, the current environment. 
So if I look at our loan book at the moment, um, we have around uh, 10 live development projects. All our um, sites are still open and the developers uh, we're funding are, are still working, but obviously at a slower rate. Mm. So there's impacts in terms of getting access to materials. Um, they can't work at the same pace because of social distancing um, rules that they need to abide by. So these will all have certain you know, impacts on potential delays and cost increases on the projects. But none of those are forecast to you know, exceed the tolerances that we've allowed within within our loan book. So we don't expect any investment losses or defaults as a result of the current uh, the current situation either. So lovely to chat to you, Uma. Thank you so much for your insights and thanks for the audience for joining us.